Good morning. And welcome on this absolutely glorious morning, resplendent with flowers and fresh spring air. And isn't it wonderful to be together on such a beautiful day? My name is Judy Stevens. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I serve as council moderator for this congregation. Whoever you are, whomever you love, however you arrived at this beloved place, you are welcome here. Our mission is to create community, transform ourselves, and transform the world. I draw your attention to the backside of your order of service for announcements and service information for next week. For those of you live stream and for video viewers, the order of services link is available to you on the YouTube service description box. Following the service, younger folks, please meet outside the back doors by the playground for a scavenger egg hunt. What fun. We could all wish we were five and running around looking for eggs. If you are new to us, please do visit our website, uucmc.org, where you can sign up to get all the latest news of the congregation by email. We look forward to getting to know you better. Please put your devices on silent as we enter into this worship together. Welcome again to this place of love and hope. I'm the Reverend Dr. Craig Rubano, and I'm pleased to have you with us on this final Sunday of a month in which our theme has been transformation, of which there is no greater illustration perhaps than the story of Easter, the transformational triumph of love and life and hope over loss and death. It is also the last Sunday in Women's History Month, and I want to thank again our women artists whose work have graced our walls these past weeks. You have one more week to appreciate them, and some are on sale the, uh, with partial proceeds going to the congregation. The listings are in the back. But these are the talents of Flory Hill, Karen Bright, Iris Martin, Helen Coe, Ellen Adamayurka, Zaharula Morfogan, and our Aesthetics Task Force leader, Angie Marfogan. Our great thanks to you all. It's been a beautiful, beautiful march having your art on our walls. <clears throat> also today, March 31st, is International Transgender Day of Visibility, celebrating transgender people and raising awareness of the discrimination faced by them worldwide as well as a celebration of their contributions to society. 
to all of our transgender, non-binary, and gender non-conforming siblings in spirit, we say, we see you, we love you, we welcome you, we learn from you, we are you, and together we all forge a more inclusive we. An announcement that next Sunday at 1 p.m. following the service, the adult RE committee is presenting the classic film, The Day the Earth Stood Still, in the community room at 1 p.m. And a reminder that March has begun our collecting the promises of us all, our pledges, to support this beloved community in the fiscal year beginning July 1st. You'll save a number of people a lot of worry and trouble and time <coughs> by getting your pledges in right now. <laughs> this is not payment. This is just a commitment of support. The forms are in the lobby and online. Please add your seeds of love now to those ready for the planting. All things grow with love. Our call to worship with worship understood in its original meaning of a shaping concern for all that is of worth comes to us from senior minister at the community church on Madison Avenue in Manhattan, the Reverend Peggy Ann Clark. Easter is a holiday of miracles. It is life from death, joy from sorrow, celebration from mourning. Easter reminds us that all is never lost, that the story continues as long as we are here to tell it. So gather up your worries, bury them beneath the ground, and watch them transform into flowers of hope, pushing through the earth, reminding us on Easter morning that love brings us back to life, calls us from sadness, from grief, from anxiety, into a world renewed and alive and filled with joy once again. Come, let us worship together. Good morning. My name is Michelle Mackenzie Creech. My pronouns are she and her. I serve this congregation of director and family ministry, and I'm delighted to invite Sandy Blakelock and her granddaughter Amelia to light our chalice this morning. We're going to light our chalice with our multi-generational chalice lighting, which I had the pleasure of uh, teaching to a group uh, who just went through our new to you you. Uh, course, but I'm going to teach it to all of you first. I'll go through it, and then on the second time, if you'll join me in it. It goes, we are Unitarian, Universalist, Congregation of Open Minds, Helping Hands, and Loving Hearts. Now let's say it all together and do it together. We are Unitarian, Universalist, Congregation of Open Minds, Helping Hands, and loving hearts. Thank you, Sandy and Amelia. I invite us to rise in body and or spirit to sing our opening hymn. It's number 61 in the hymnals and on the screens. Lo, the earth awakes again. 61.
We come with loving hearts and open minds, ready to celebrate the renewal and hope that Easter represents. Easter falls on a different date each year. The date is determined by the lunar phases. So Easter falls on the first Sunday after the full moon that follows the spring equinox. This year, as Reverend Craig already mentioned, Easter coincides with International Transgender Day of Visibility, celebrated yearly on March 31st, since it was established in 2009. It's a day dedicated to honoring and recognizing the resilience, strength, and beauty of transgender individuals. The overlap of these two observances is what drew me into a story called Neither by Airlie Anderson. And it made it even more exciting when I learned that Anderson is a member of the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Princeton, New Jersey. Once upon a time, there were two kinds, this and that, these and those, one or the other, until, honk, <laughs> what kind are you? I'm both. You can't be both. You must be neither. I'm neither? Neither tried to play a this game. You can't play with us. You're not rabbity enough. Neither tried to play a that game. You can't play with us. You're not birdie enough. Why don't you find somewhere else? You're not one of us. You're neither. Neither, neither, neither or neither. <laughs> Where did you come from? Honk. I'm from the land of this and that, but I'm neither. So I'm looking for somewhere else to fit in. This isn't somewhere else, but you will fit in here. Neither wondered, where is here? Neither looked around so many different kinds. It's the land of all. Come play with us. But I'm different from everyone here. I'm neither red nor orange nor yellow nor blue. Exactly. Excuse us. Now, if you'll notice these two who are interrupting are from the beginning of our story. They say, excuse us, we're from the land of this and that, but we don't fit in at home. We're looking for somewhere else. But you said I was neither. You said I should go somewhere else. Well, this isn't somewhere else. This is the land of all, and everyone fits in here. Once upon a time, there were many kinds. This and that, somewhat and whatnot, either, very, sort of, just, rather, a little, neither, and both, and all, were welcome. All were welcome. This Easter Sunday, this Trans Day, Transgender Day of Visibility, all are welcome. Just as neither finds acceptance and belonging among those who challenge societal norms. Just as, I'm on the wrong page, I'm jumping ahead give you all a preview to what's coming. So let's go back to that the story neither, at the core of the story is transformation. And much like the journey, 
we, cre- we commemorate during Easter, it speaks to this idea of rebirth and renewal. And as we saw in the story, neither feels out of place in the world that insists on categorization. Just like how some of our friends might not feel like a boy or a girl. Neither feels different, too. Neither embarks on a quest to find a place of belonging. Because belonging is essential to joy and growth and well-being. And neither encounters characters who challenge these traditional norms, these notions of identity, ultimately discovering a community where being neither is accepted and celebrated. The message of Jesus, whose resurrections Christians celebrate on Easter Sunday, echoes this call of love and inclusion. Jesus was a great teacher who lived long, long ago. And he hung out with people who felt left out, people who didn't fit in to a category of this or that. He showed them love, and he made them feel special. And it's Jesus' teachings that remind us that it's important to embrace difference. It's important to stand in solidarity and support people who are oppressed and marginalized. And it's in our Unitarian Universalist tradition. This is where I was going. This is the community. This is where neither, where all have a place to be welcome. Here we affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every person. All people are important. And we recognize that each individual is a beloved part of that interdependent web of existence. Neither finds acceptance and belonging among those who are challenging the norms. Just as Jesus called on his followers to practice radical inclusion and observe the golden rule to treat others the way we want to be treated. We Unitarian Universalists are called to create communities where everyone is welcomed and celebrated for who they are. And it's in the spirit of transformation and the beauty that arises when we open our hearts and our minds to the full spectrum of human experience that we celebrate today. And so I wish you a happy Easter, a happy transgender day of visibility, and may this message of love and inclusion guide us always and lead us to discover that divine spirit that is in each of us. May it be so. Every week in this congregation, we're provided with an opportunity to practice generosity. This is your invitation to contribute to the well-being of our congregation and to our social justice partners through the good works of organizations which receive half the monies collected each month. A special fifth Sunday offering this morning will go to Murray Grove Retreat and Renewal Center, a birthplace of universalism in America, located in Lenoka Harbor, New Jersey. Murray Grove promotes United, Unitarian Universalist principles in its many diverse programs of lectures, meditation groups, drumming, and dance, inspired by the concept of radical hospitality. Murray Grove is an inclusive community reaching out to people of all faiths. For those of you present in the meeting house, the plates will be passed by the ushers. You may also join this time of generosity via text, send your offering by mail, or charge your contribution online with a memo designating an amount to Murray Grove. Please give generously.
Right from the beginning, there were conflicting views of what happened after Jesus' death and a wide spread of opinions about what it all meant. The controversies over this raged for 400 years until an agreed-upon account was reached as far as orthodoxy was concerned. But to this day, a lot of Christian energy has been and is expended on defending an official story that is clearly a compromise among many stories. Even the name of the holiday in English, Easter, stirs up passions among some Christians who feel the need to defend one version of how things went down and what it means. This time of year, I receive strident Facebook posts from, granted, a minority, a minority Christian faction, but reminding everyone that the word Easter does not derive from the goddess of spring, Easter, or any other historically dubious origin. It simply derives from the old English word for east, which is the direction both of the sunrise and the way Christians faced to pray. I like to call this group of carpers the keep the East in Easter bunch. <laughs> oh, that was, I thought that was pretty good. Uh, <clears throat> what posts like that don't go on to explain is that that very old English word for East comes from a Latin word for dawn, itself derived from words inspired by the sun's earlier and earlier emergence in the spring and all of the earth-centered celebrations of that astrological fact. Also not mentioned is that only in the Germanic cultures heavily influenced by and celebrating the spring goddess Easter is the word for Easter not derived from words associated with Passover. Pascal, Pasqua, Pac. Another theory that has its proponents this time of year. I should just get off Facebook, clearly. <laughs> <clears throat> this theory, that the origin of the English word Easter was the season of Christian instruction that led to baptisms on Easter morning and Easter week, during which there was a traditional wearing of white, or in Latin, in albis. In this version of Easter origins, in albis was misunderstood as the plural of the Latin alba, dawn in Italian and Spanish, and so was translated into Old High German as eostarum for dawn, eostarum, which led to Easter. So this theory is fairly convoluted and inclu includes a misunderstanding due to inaccurate translation. But funnier things have happened. I mean, the virgin birth of Jesus derived from an inaccurate translation into Greek of a passage from Isaiah. So there's that. <laughs> it does seem to me that no matter how you slice it, east or in albis, the word Easter has to do with the returning dawn light of springtime. And that's why we have flowers and bunnies and chicks and chick bunnies and bunny chicks <laughs> and eggs associated with the celebration. And both word origin theories lead us to something indeed special about the story of Easter itself. It happened in the morning at dawn. The confusion started when the accounts of the death and resurrection of Jesus contained in the four Gospels were all different. At a recent funeral service, a priest seemingly incapable of keeping his eulogistic remarks centered on the deceased allowed his anxiety about Easter to overtake his words. He began to pepper the mourning family and friends 
with questions, one of which was, who was the first to find the empty tomb? Of course, many could have told him that the answer depends on which gospel you read. In John, it's Mary Magdalene. In the other gospels, it's a group of women, among whom is Mary, the mother of Jesus. In Matthew, it's Mary and another Mary. In Mark, it's Mary and another Mary, and Salome. In Luke, it's Mary, Mary, Joanne, and a number of unnamed women. The priest, however, without waiting for an answer to his question, proclaimed, it was Mary, the mother of Jesus. That's why we venerate her. If only saying things made them so. <laughs> Something we see in our political climate nowadays. <laughs> however, from this short survey, surely another thing seems crystal clear and appropriate to bring up on this final Sunday of Women's History Month. Whatever happened Easter morning, women were at the center. Uh, uh. Unfortunately, the versions that they wrote we don't have access to, but that's another story. The sad thing is that falling captive to bickering over the details allows one of the, if not the most powerful story of transformation ever committed to goatskin to be clouded over with recrimination. Why all the agitation, anyway? I would think that a more confident faith would welcome any and all associations of joy for a holiday that is about love being more powerful than death, just as spring is ultimately more powerful than winter, just as light is more powerful than darkness. Easter is the time we celebrate and remember the life and death of Jesus of Nazareth a loving, caring person, and a respected teacher. He helped people who were sick to heal. Over and over again, Jesus stood up for people who were left out or bullied. He listened to people who were ignored, people whose ideas many thought were not important. He taught others how to be loving and to live lives that mattered. He envisioned a world like in our story wisdom this morning, in which everyone was welcomed for who they are. Jesus is also remembered for his courage. He spoke out against unjust laws and against people who were unfair and unkind. He tried to expand some of the interpretations of his own Hebrew tradition. He made both friends and enemies by his teachings and actions. People who were inspired by Jesus became his followers. But even among Jesus' followers, there was disagreement. When Jesus went to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover, one of his own disciples turned him over to his enemies. He was arrested and sent to death by crucifixion, which was a cruel way. Romans put criminals to death. He was nailed to a cross and died. Jesus' followers were confused, sad, scared. They didn't know what to do. Well, one morning after Jesus died, now known as Easter Sunday, it is said that his women followers went to his tomb and found the stone protecting it rolled away, his body gone. In John's account, Mary Magdalene saw a man whom she recognized as Jesus in the garden. And he told her not to be afraid, that he was going to be with God. Later, others of his followers believed they saw Jesus too. And Jesus told them to carry on his message by doing what he had done in his life. The early Jesus movement carried on his work so that his message of justice and care would not die with him. This is the miracle of Jesus' resurrection that is now celebrated on Easter. When people really believe in something, it gives them hope and courage. When we are sad or confused, sharing our memories 
and doing things which show our love and care for one another can feel us and help them feel better. Jesus' followers began to tell his story, and so full of his love for them were they that the story started to gain traction among people far more diverse than anything Jesus had experienced in his lifetime. Love is powerful. And whether the word Easter comes from wearing white on Easter morning or the direction the sun rises on Easter morning, or a goddess of the season in which the sun rises brighter and earlier each and every morning. The reality is that morning can become a reset button for everything that happened in the past, no matter how hard. Love brings people together into community, and the power of love can be experienced every morning, not just once a year. Love will give us the courage and show us the way to live differently in our worlds. At tea time this past week, and by the way, every Thursday that I'm in the pulpit, we have tea time on Thursday afternoons at four on Zoom, and you are all welcome. It's a really powerful experience that hour. This past week, we read a piece by Mary Oliver entitled Morning Poem, whose first line to me, captures the message of Easter as well as anything. Every morning, the world is created. Every morning, the world is created. Every morning, we and the whole world alongside us are given a new opportunity to be present to one another. As poet E.E. E. Cummings once said in a poem shared by someone at tea time, not about Easter morning, but about any morning, this is the sun's birthday. This is the birth day of life and love and wings. There are many things out of our control each morning, including whether it's raining or not. But one thing nearly always in our control is taking the opportunity to let someone else know that they are not alone, that they are loved. When others are afraid or lost in the darkness of their worries, we can be the light that leads them home. This morning, let us not forget the message of Easter, that if we lean into the kind of love demonstrated by Jesus of Nazareth during an era of great turmoil and disagreement, no matter the circumstances, Yes, even in the face of death, it will be love that rises in the morning. It will be love that prevails. May it be so.
Nothing's gonna stop me from being your friend. All you need, let me be. Be here until the end. I invite us into a time of prayer and meditation. With these words, written especially for Easter, by a former minister of religious education at the First Universalist Church of Denver, Colorado, the Reverend Ruth Ellen Gibson. Spirit of life, we come together this Easter morning to rejoice in your ongoing creation around us and within us. We come to rejoice, but we come with burdens of sorrow and pain, of shame and fear, of false obligation and false pride. On this Easter morning, may we discover a joyous and courageous faith enabling us to set these burdens down. We would remember the teachings of Jesus, whose words and example embodied your outreaching and unconditional love. And we acknowledge that we yearn to be touched by such love, but that we are not always ready to receive it or to give it. Our fears get in the way. We have hardened our hearts and busied our lives with cares. On this Easter morning, we pray that the heavy stones which burden us and separate us from you may be rolled away, releasing our spirits to love and to new life. Spirit of life, we confess that too often we have not taken time to search for the beauty of your creation hidden around us. As we allow such beauty to go unnoticed, we have deprived ourselves of occasions for joy and delight. On this Easter morning, we pray that our senses may come alive, ready to respond to all the beauty, harmony, fragrance, taste, and texture of life all around us. It is the season of renewal. And all around us, everything is bursting into bloom or song. The hidden beauty of nature is preparing to unfold. On this Easter morning, we would be assured that we too have a hidden inner beauty ready to unfold, reflecting the image of your creative power. Spirit of life, we pray for the courage to open ourselves to your touch knowing that as we do, we will be changed. We will grow. But in doing so, we must leave behind the outgrown coverings which have hidden our true and most beautiful selves. Spirit of life, as we feel you flowing and pulsing within, we pray for a courageous and joyous faith, empowering us to become our finest and truest selves empowering us to see your image in all our siblings, 
empowering us to participate with you in the creation of a new time of life in which love, justice, beauty, and peace are abundantly available to all. For this and other things we pray in a moment of silence. Amen. And now I invite us to rise in body and our spirit to sing our closing hymn. We got a little preview of it earlier. <laughs> it's number 270 in our hymnals and on the screens. O oh, day of light and gladness. that immediately following the service, our younger congregants are, will meet outside of the back doors next to the fenced-in playground. You'll meet Sari there and wait for instructions. <laughs> our closing words of benediction come to us from affiliated community minister at Shoreline UU Society of Madison, Connecticut, the Reverend Jean W. Lloyd. At last... We are here. After a long winter, we say enthusiastically and without second thought, Alleluia. Alleluia. Spring is here in all her glory. New life begins. The earth and its creatures are resurrected from their dens of hibernation and dark slumber. Spring is here. Long live spring. Long live the rebirthing of life into new and creative forms. Long live majestic love that calls us out of our shells, out of our tombs, into new ways of being and sacrifice for others. Let the husk of our shells crack wide open in celebration of our place in humanity, our place in nature, our place in the universe. Awake, awake, 
Rejoice, live fully, live life fully, live life together, live life now. Alleluia. We are called to live life with reverence for that which calls forth in creativity and love. Let us go in peace to bless the world.